So how do we make nitric oxide? We make nitric oxide through two pathways. The first pathway is the arginine NOS, nitric oxide synthase enzyme pathway. This pathway takes arginine and oxidizes it down to nitric oxide. But there's many factors that influence the functionality of this NOS pathway. In fact, the NOS enzyme gets uncoupled or dysfunctional from many factors. That's why this nitrate to nitrite, the nitric oxide pathway, is so critical to support. So we eat the nitrates or take the supplement, consume the nitrates. The nitrates, the NO3, gets absorbed, circulates around, it concentrates in the salivary glands. And we've got good commensal bacteria on the dorsal aspect of our tongue that will reduce that nitrate to nitrite. And the nitrate, nitrite concentration in our oral cavity is what our nitric oxide test strips test. They test your ability to reduce that nitrate to nitrite, the immediate precursor to nitric oxide. So we swallow the nitrite and some of the nitrite gets reduced further to nitric oxide in the acidic environment of the stomach. But most of the nitrite is absorbed, circulates around, and we have other nitrite reductases in our tissue in order to reduce the nitrite to nitric oxide on an as needed basis. Like in the muscle, the myoglobin can re reduce the nitrite to nitric oxide. The deoxyhemoglobin. Even the electron transport chain has nitrite reductase activity to increase the nitric oxide production. So this pathway is not so affected by all these factors that affect the NOS pathway. So what are those factors? Aging. As we age, our ability to produce nitric oxide decreases exponentially. By the time we're 40, the NOS pathway is only functioning around 50%. By the time we're 60, that NOS pathway is only functioning about 15%. The diet, the standard American diet, the SAD diet, devoid of nitrate-rich veggies. Exercise, exercise increases our ability to make nitric oxide. But being a couch potato decreases our nitric oxide. Medications. There's a lot of medications that influence that NOS pathway. We've got antibiotics, antidepressants, NSAIDs, the Motrins, birth control pills, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. In fact, proton pump inhibitors decrease our production of nitric oxide through both pathways through the NOS pathway and through the nitrate to nitrite to NO path. Pollution, anything that increases oxidative stress will decrease our ability to make nitric oxide. Heavy metals, genetics, the NOS, NOS SNPs, but not just the NOS SNPs, anything that influences our oxidative stress, like our SOD SNPs, catalase, any iron dysregulation SNPs, our HFV SNPs, our HMOX, anything that influences our ability to make BH4. 
because BH4 is an essential nutrient in that NOS enzyme. And without adequate BH4, that NOS enzyme becomes uncoupled. And when the NOS enzyme becomes uncoupled, it becomes an enzyme that produces superoxide, not nitric oxide. So the SNPs around BH4, your DHFR, your QDPR, and the big one, the MTHFR. So if you've got MTHFR SNPs, you're by definition nitric oxide deficient because you're not able to make optimal BH4. And then the big one, stress. Stress decreases our production of nitric oxide, impairing our immune response, impairing our circulation and our microcirculation. So a lot of factors that go into our decreased nitric oxide formation as we get older. So sexual health refers to a state of well-being that lets a person fully participate in and enjoy sexual activity. It's normal, healthy, and a very positive aspect of life, which is an essential component for both species propagation and the quality of life. And I believe that sexual energy is our life force energy. It's the source of our creative energy. It allows our, the deepest part of ourselves to come up. And when sexual dysfunction starts to occur, it can impair our quality of life and our personal relationships. And optimal nitric oxide is an essential component and both male and female sexual response and satisfaction. Erectile dysfunction is endothelial dysfunction. In fact, erectile dysfunction is usually the first sign of cardiovascular disease. And it happens in about 20% of all adult males about 30 to 50% of all males between the ages of 40 and 70, and more than 60% of men older than 70 years old. Nitric oxide is a non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic neurotransmitter that innervates the corpus cavernosum of the penis. Plays a critical role an initiation of the pressure for the erection, and this activates soluble guanyl cyclase to increase cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP regulates the activity of the calcium channels to relax smooth muscles of the corpus cavernosum to allow engorgement. And this cyclic GMP is where the PDE5 inhibitors, the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors work, like Viagra and Cialis. So they prolong the action of the cyclic GMP to extend erections. They do not cause erections. In fact, somebody needs to have adequate nitric oxide in order to get the erection first, and then the PDE5 inhibitor will extend that. But if you don't have enough nitric oxide to begin with, you won't, these, these drugs won't work. And that's why they don't work in about 50% of the people. Testosterone has a dual action in the tissue. Testosterone will upregulate the NOS enzyme, increasing nitric oxide production, but it also modulates the PDE5 activity. But I caution on the use of aromatase inhibitors, the anastrozole, the letrozole, 
and the DHT blockers, the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Both of these uncoupled NOS decrease the production of nitric oxide and increase the occurrence of ED. So these aromatase inhibitors are used frequently in the alternative medical community for compound they're, they're put in compounded testosterone prescriptions or replacement therapy for men. And the DHT blockers, these are used for hair loss. But both of these drugs are connected with a high occurrence of ED. Let's talk about women now. Research shows that in the U.S., between 25 and 60 percent of women experience some sort of sexual dysfunction. Nitric oxide governs the female genital response. It's all mediated by nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator of clitoral, labial, and vaginal tissue. It's a non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic neurotransmitter to relax those smooth muscles and to increase the blood flow and response. We need that blood flow to be able to respond. Increased blood flow means better orgasms. Your estradiol, progesterone, DHEA, all these hormones support the ENOS, the endothelial NOS, production of nitric oxide. However, remember we were talking about how NOS gets uncoupled due to aging and all those other factors. So the production of nitric oxide could be compromised from uncoupled NOS. Nitric oxide acts like a neurotransmitter in the brain, which modulates the release of oxytocin and LHRH, luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone. And both of these are central in the modulation of sexual behavior. Oxytocin, the cuddle hormone, the love hormone, increases nitric oxide through the NOS enzyme. And in turn, orgasms increase oxytocin. So we've got a good cycle here. Nitric oxide decreases anxiety, which increases sexual pleasure. Is involved in the creation of long-term memory. Study shows that memory and libido are closely connected. Nitric oxide enhances our ability to remember sex sense, the pheromones. Nitric oxide mediates vaginal lubrication. So as women, if we don't have optimal nitric oxide, we're unable to feel, to respond, or lubricate. So if we're not, if as a woman, if I, I can't feel and I'm not lubricating, you're probably not very interested in having sex. SSRIs, they inhibit, uncouple the NOS enzyme, decreasing nitric oxide production, and this blocks arousal in both men and women. And this leads to problem with desire, arousal, orgasm, ejaculation. So as we get older, the production declines. And as you can see for this, this diagram right here, as women, we can hold on to our nitric oxide production a little better than men until we go through menopause. And then it kind of evens out with the men. But our estrogen production stimulates ENOS, the endothelial NOS, to increase the nitric oxide. 
So as you see over here, the progression of endothelial dysfunction is directly related to the amount of nitric oxide we can produce. By the time we're 40, we'll only be able to produce about 50% of the nitric oxide we were producing when we were 20. By the time we're 60, we're only producing about 15%. So this is why it's essential to support that nitrate to nitrite the nitric oxide pathway to increase our production of nitric oxide outright, but it also goes back around and recouples the NOS, increasing the nitric oxide there and decreasing oxidative stress. So in summary, sexual desire is cultivated in the brain and our sex organs rely on hormones and neurotransmitters to promote libido as well to support the changes in blood flow needed for the sexual act. Nitric oxide pr production naturally decreases as we age, reducing to about 50% by the time we're 40 and as little as 15% by the time we are 60. And this is through that NOS pathway. That's by supporting the nitrate to nitrite. The nitric oxide pathway is so critical. It not only increases the nitric oxide directly, it goes back around and helps recouple that NOS and when you recouple the NOS, you decrease the superoxide production and increase nitric oxide production. Optical nitric oxide is an essential component in both male and female sexual response and satisfaction. 